morning one and all today we are going to discuss about the classification of cables and also insulating materials for the cables okay first of all uh, in the previous class we already discussed about the various parts in the cables okay how many layers are there for the giving the insulation for that cables okay that all will be discussed in the previous class now in the present class we are discussing about the uh, which type of insulating materials are used for the different layers okay we are having the so many layers for the insulation uh, of cables okay which type of materials are used for that insulation okay that all will be discussed in the present class first of all what are the insulating materials for the cables are there means first one is the rubber next one is the vulcanized indian rubber next one is impregnated paper next varnish cambric next polyvinyl chloride and cross linked polyethanol okay these are the various materials for the you insulating for the for giving the insulation of a cables okay each and every insulating material having the different properties okay each and every insulating materials having the insulating properties okay first coming to the rubber okay what is the main insulating properties are there in the rubber okay it can be obtained from milky shape of tropical trees or from oil products okay this type of insulation okay that is the the rubber is made by using the tropical trees or from oil products okay from the oil products are the tropical trees okay we will uh, form the rubber as the insulating material okay and it has a dielectric strength of 30 kilo volts per mm okay the rubber has the dielectric strength of 30 kilo volts per mm okay the insulation resistivity the insulation resistivity is 10 power 17 ohm per centimeter okay that is specific resistance for the rubber next the relative permittivity varying between 2 to 3 okay the relating permittivity for the rubber is varying in between 2 to 3 okay there are radially absorbs the moisture okay this type of rubber is absorbs the moisture and soft and liable to damage okay due to the rough handling and the edges when exposed to the light okay there are readily absorbs the moisture soft and liable to damage okay due to the rough handling and the edges when exposed to the light okay and maximum safe temperature is very low about 8 38 degree centigrade only if the temperature is increases then this type of insulation not give the perfect insulation for the cables okay first of all the rubber is made by using the some kinds of oil products or the some tropical trees okay this is the material okay that will be used for forming this rubber and the dielectric strength for that rubber is the 30 kilo volts per mm okay the dielectric strength of the rubber is 30 kilo volts per mm okay therefore the insulation resistivity is 10 into 10 power 17 is ohm per centimeters and the relative permittivity of the rubber is 2 to 2 3 okay next it absorbs the moisture okay it readily uh, absorbs the moisture safe and liable to damage due to the rough handlings okay if any rough handlings are obtained in this case okay it stand somewhat withstand that uh, material has the insulation okay therefore the maximum safe temperature is very less that is 38 degree centigrade only okay if the temperature is increases okay beyond that value then this rubber is hmm, 
not give for perfect insulation for the cables okay that's why we are using the another insulating material okay that is the vulcanized indian rubber okay that is the vulcanized indian rubber okay first of all what is the difference between the vulcanized indian rubber and the indian rubber okay this is the direct product okay that will be obtained from the tropical trees and some oil products but that vulcanized indian rubber okay it can be obtained from the mixing rubber pure rubber with a mineral components okay this is the pure rubber and this is not pure rubber okay this will be mixed with the some mineral components okay this vulcanized indian rubber is mixing for the pure rubber with some mineral components okay that is zinc oxide red lead sulfur and heat up to 150 degree centigrade okay this vulcanized this rubber that pure rubber and combination of that some minerals okay and we are combining the minerals okay by using zinc oxide lead red lead and sulfur and by combination of this all the minerals and the pure rubber okay then we form the uh, pure rubber and we will heat that all the products and then we form the vulcanized indian rubber okay that heating temperature is about 150 degrees centigrade okay by mixing the pure rubber and zinc oxide red lead and sulfur okay but all all the minerals and the pure rubber is heated up to 150 degree centigrade and then we form this type of rubber for the insulation purpose okay why because we are uh, uh, mixing the all the minerals with the pure rubber and then heating them and why because we are forming this type of rubber means okay pure rubber does not gives the does not withstand the high temperatures and also the it does not gives the high mechanical strength and uh, it uh, absorbs the some moisture also okay that's why that pure rubber is converted into the combination of the various minerals and them and heat together at 150 degrees and then we form the vulcanized indian rubber okay understand ma okay this vulcanized indian rubber salts are uh, obtained by heating the rubber for combination of the minerals okay at 150 degrees we are heating that minerals and the pure rubber then we form the vulcanized indian rubber okay it has great mechanical strength for the formation of this this vulcanized indian rubber okay we are increasing the temperature withstand capacity and also improving the high mechanical strength okay it has greater mechanical strength durability and wear resistant property and wear resistant property okay the sulfur reacts quickly with the copper okay this sulfur reacts quickly with the copper to tin copper conductors are used okay in this case minerals we are using as the sulfur okay that sulfur is reacted with the copper material okay the copper is made um, the conductor is made by using this copper material okay therefore the sulfur is reacted with that copper then the conduct therefore the thickened copper conductors are used in the case of a cables okay it is suitable for low and moderate cables okay this type of vulcanized rubber is used as the insulation for the moderate voltages and the low voltages only okay for the high voltages we are using the another materials next type of insulating material is the impregnated paper okay next type of material is the impregnated paper okay this material has the suppressed the rubber okay this material is suppressed the rubber consists of chemically pulped paper impregnated okay with naphthenic and 
paraffinic materials okay this impregnated paper has suppressed with the rubber and it consists of a chemical sum and it will be obtained by some chemical reactions are done okay this uh, chemically pulped paper impregnated with okay this chemically pulped paper is impregnated with the naphthenic and paraffinic materials okay it has the low cost and low capacity and high dielectric strength and high insulation resistance okay for the formation of that impregnator paper okay it gives the good insulation resistance and it having the high dielectric strength and low capacity and also the low cost okay the main disadvantage by using this impregnated paper is that it is a hygrogen hygroscopic okay for this reason the paper insulation is always provided protective coverings okay this is used only for the protective covering of that insulation or the insulating materials or the cables okay this type of impregnated paper okay is prepared by the crafter doing the chemical pulp paper impregnated with the naphthalene and traffic materials okay but it gives the high dielectric strength and also it gives the high insulation resistance okay but only that main disadvantage is the high grow scopics okay that's why we are using the another insulating material that is the varnish cambric okay it is the simple the cotton cloth impregnated and coated with the varnish okay this is the very simple formation of that material and it is coated with the varnish and it is coated with the varnish okay it is the one cotton cloth simple cotton cloth and impregnated and coated with the varnish okay as the varnish cambric is also hygroscopic no need to no need some protection okay there is no requirement of the another protection okay its dielectric strength is about uh, dielectric dielectric strength is is about 4 kilovolts per mm okay the dielectric strength is about 4 kilovolts per mm and permittivity is 2.5 to 3.8 and permittivity is up to 2.5 to 3.8 okay therefore the dielectric strength is about 4 kilovolts per mm and the relative permittivity for that varnish cambric is 2.5 to 3.8 okay it is a simple type of cotton and it is varnished with the and it is coated with the varnish and it is coated with the varnish as the varnish cambric is also the hygroscopic okay it is also hygroscopic okay next type of insulating material is the polyvinyl chloride okay this will be commonly used insulating materials for that cables okay that is the pvc okay this is the pvc that means polyvinyl chloride okay this material has the good dielectric strength and high insulation resistance and high melting temperature okay it having the good insulation resistance and high melting temperature and good dielectric strength okay this have so good mechanical properties when compared to the rubber and it gives the good mechanical properties okay in the household purpose also we are using as the pvc as the insulating for that wires or the cables okay it is interact with the oxygen and almost interact to many alkyls and the acids okay it does not uh, do any chemical reactions for all other oxides and all uh, other acids and the oxygen and minerals okay therefore by using this polyvinyl carrad polyvinyl chloride okay we increase the dielectric strength and also the it having the high insulation resistance and also it gives more mechanical strength and also good melting temperatures okay these are the various insulating materials okay that will be used in the case of a 
cables okay next one is the cross linked polyethylene okay this material has temperature ranges beyond 250 to 300 degrees centigrade okay when we are uh, distributing or transmitting very high level of voltages okay in this case in the in that case we are using the cross linked polyethylene okay that is uh, the materials okay uh, where having the high temperature resistance and uh, uh, when we are using the high temperature high voltages okay that will be distributed in the underground cables okay in that case we are using the cross linked polyethylene as the insulating materials okay it gives the good insulation property and also the it having the high mechanically stable okay it is light in weight and small overall dimension and low dielectric constraints and high mechanical strength and also a low water absorption property and it having the low water absorption property and this cables permit conductor temperature of 90 degree centigrade to 250 degree centigrade under normal and short circuit conditions okay understand ma under normal and short circuit conditions also it withstand the high dielectric strength and it gives the high mechanically stable and there is no chemical reactions are the obtained by using this type of insulating materials and also this type of cables uh, is used for the suitable for up to 33 kilo volts okay this type of insulating materials are used up to 33 kilo volts okay understand ma these are the various types of insulating materials okay that will be used for the underground cables okay first one is the rubber next one is the varnish cambric okay it is the implement of for that rubber okay the rubber does not give high mechanical strength and it absorbs the some moisture also okay therefore we are using that rubber is mixed with the some mineral components and then heat at 150 degrees and then we form the varnish vulcanized indian rubbers okay and then it gives the mechanical strength and high reliability okay therefore it can be used for the low and moderate voltages next one is the impregnated paper and varnish cambric and polyvinyl chloride and cross linked polythenes okay polyethylene are the various insulating materials for giving the insulation for the underground cables okay this are the practical view of that uh, xlpe xlpe means the cross linked polyethylene as the insulating materials okay this type of cables will be used for high voltage ranges that is above 33 kilo volts ranges okay therefore by using this type of insulating materials for that underground cables okay we are increasing the um, high dielectric so we are increasing the safety okay that's why we are using the xlp as the cables for the above voltage ranges okay these are the various types of insulating materials for used in the case of a cables okay next coming to the what are the classifications are there in the case of a cables okay how many types of how many types of classifications are there okay how many types of cables are there in the case of underground cables okay first one is the lt lt means the low tension cable okay this type of cable lt cable is used up to 1000 volts okay this type of low tension cable is used up to 1000 volts next one is the ht ht means the high tension cable okay this high tension cable is used up to okay this high tension cable is used up to 11000 volts okay high tension cable is used for about uh, up to 11000 volts next one is the st type of cable that is the super tension cable okay this super tension cable is used up to from 
22 kilo volts to 33 kilo volts okay this type of cable is used for up to 22 kilo volts to 33 kilo volts okay this is the s3 cable that is uh, from 22 to 33 kilo volts the super tension cable is used up to 22 kilo volts to 33 kilo volts okay next type of cable is the extra high tension cable okay next type of cable is the extra high tension cable okay the eht cable okay it is used for uh, from 33 kilo volts to 66 kilo volts okay up to 66 kilo volts this ht type of cables are used okay that is high tension cables okay beyond 132 kilo volts we are using the extra super voltage cables okay beyond 132 k kilo volts okay we are using the extra super tension cables okay these are the various types of cables okay depending upon the voltage levels okay the cables are classified like this okay depending upon the voltage levels okay the cables are classified like this okay Okay, that is low tension cables, high tension cables, super tension cables, extra high tension cables and extra super voltage cables. Okay, first the low tension cables are used up to 1000 volts and high tension cables are used up to 11000 volts and super tension cables are used up to 22 to 33 kilo volts and extra high tension cables are used up to 33 to 66 kilo volts and extra super voltage cables are used up to 132 kilo volts up to 132 kilo volts we are using the extra super voltage cables okay these are the various types of cables okay that will be classified depending upon the voltage levels okay this is the practical view this is the practical view for that extra high tension cables and this is the cross sectional view for the extra high tension cables okay this is the cross sectional view for that extra high tension voltage cables okay this is the pvc jacket and h core binder tape and this is the 5 ml copper tape shield and this is the a class and b compressed copper conductor okay this is the copper conductor and this is the extracted conductor sheet and this is the insulation and this is the ground conductor okay g is the ground conductor and d is the extracted semi conducting insulating shieldings and this is the filter and continuous aluminium armory continuous aluminium armory these are the various parts in the case of a high tension cable high tension means extra high tension cable okay this type of cables will be used up to 33 kilo volts to 66 kilo volts okay eht tension eht cables are used up to 66 kilo volts okay that will be used for about uh, 33 kilo volts to 66 kilo volts and this is the practical view and this is the cross sectional view for this diagram okay in this case we are using the three cores okay these are the various parts for that high tension cables this is the a b c d e f g h i j okay and the a means the class b compressed copper conductor b is the extracted conductor shielding okay this is the a conductor and this is the shielding and this is the c part is the insulation and this is the thermostatic insulation steel and this is the copper tape shield and this is the filter and this is the core binder tape and this is the aluminium harmony this is the jacket okay this is the jacket and these are the various constructional parts 
for the high tension cables and this is the cross sectional view for the three core high tension cables okay this type of cables is used for up to 33 kilo volts to 66 kilo volts up to 33 kilo volts to 66 kilo volts okay we are using the high extra high tension cables okay next one is the low tension cable okay next one is the low tension cable okay this is the practical view for that low tension cable okay the low tension cable is used up to 1000 volts okay the low tension cable is used up to 1000 volts and these are the various parts for that low tension cables that is the this is the conductor single core conductor at the top of this conductor we are using the tape and this is the insulation and this is also the tape for that insulation in this case, we are using the varnish cambric or the any impregnated paper for giving the insulation. And this is the metallic shielding and this is the plastic sheath. Okay, this is the plastic sheath. Last cover is the plastic sheath. Okay, this is the practical view for that low tension cables. Okay, this type of low tension cables is used for the up to thousand volts okay up to thousand volts we are using the up to thousand volts we are using the low tension cables okay these are the various parts for that low tension cable this is the single core conductor and this is the tape and this is the insulation and metallic sheathing and plastic sheath okay next one is the three core cable okay this is the practical view practical diagram for the three core belted cable okay in this cable the conductors are wrapped with the oil impregnated papers okay in this type of cable the conductors are wrapped with the oil impregnated papers okay the cross uh, are the assembles with the filter materials okay this type of cables are used up to 11 kilo volts to 22 kilo volts for high voltages okay, we are using beyond 22 kilo volts okay we are using the as a high insulation resistance for paper is quite small long layers okay therefore that strands and stresses are set up and therefore the leakage currents across that belted core cables are increases okay this is the cross sectional view for that or the cross sectional view for the three core belted cables okay and all the inner parts and the overall constructions for the cables okay that all will be discussed in the next class okay these are the three core belted cable cross section three core belted cable cross section okay it consisting of a lead sheath okay this is the lead sheath and this is the thickness of insulation between the conductor and the sheath. Okay, there is a gap. Okay, this is the gap. Okay, this gap indicates the thickness of insulation between the conductor and the sheath. And this is the paper belt. Okay, this is the paper belt. And this is the three core cable. This is the core one, core two, and this is the core three. Okay, these three cores are insulated from each other. Okay, this is the insulation for that uh, between this core to this core and between this core to this core we are having the insulation and this core to this core we are having the another insulation. Okay, the, this uh, gap is called as the thickness of insulation. Okay, the layer is covered with the lead sheet. Okay, this is the overall cross section for the three core belted cable. Okay. In this case, the belt is the paper. Okay. The three cores are formed by the are formed are combined with the belt. Okay. Therefore, then it is called as the three core belted cable. Okay. That belt is formed with the paper. Impregnated paper. Okay. In between this conductor to this conductor, we are having the gap. Okay, that gap is called as the thickness of insulation between the conductor. Okay, this gap is called as the thickness of insulation 
between the conductor okay this is the thickness of insulation between the conductor and this is the thickness of insulation between the conductor to sheath okay sheath means the lead sheath okay this is the gap between the thickness of insulation between the conductor to the lead sheath okay this is the lead sheath and this is the the gap between these two conductors or the two pores is the thickness of insulation between the conductors okay these are the thickness of insulation between the conductors okay this is the cross sectional view for the three core belted cables okay these three core belted cables are again classified are the into h type cables and sl type of cables okay this can be used up to 33 kilo volts okay these are mainly two types that is the h type cables and the s type of cables okay these are the h type of cables okay this three core cables are again classified into two types that is the h type and the l type of cables okay these are the various classifications for that cable depending upon the voltage levels okay these cables are classified into like this and these are the various types of insulating materials okay these are the various types of insulating materials okay that will be used for the insulation for the underground cables okay we are having the different types of insulating materials and each and every material having the different properties okay for for giving the protection for the cables okay which type of materials are suitable okay that all will be decided for their properties only and this is the practical view for the polyethane uh, polyethane insulation okay this is the polyethane insulation so okay this will be used for above high voltage ranges high voltage ranges up to above 33 kilo volts we are using this type of insulation and these are the various practical views for the low tension cables and these are the high tension cables extra high tension cables and this is the cross sectional view for that low tension and the extra high tension cables and these are the three core cables okay we are using the three cores okay the three cores are insulated from the paper belt and we are having the uh, insulation between the core to core and also the in between core to the sheet conductor to the lead sheet okay we are having the another insulation is there okay this is the three core belted cable constructional and the cross sectional view diagram okay this three core belted cables are again classified into two types that is the h type cable and the sl type of cables okay this is the h type of cable cross sectional view okay it consisting of a three cores okay this is the core 1 this is the core 2 and this is the core 3 they are having the different cores are there three cores are there and this is the belted okay metallic shield and belted conducting belt and this is the lead sheath and bedding or moving and surveying are the different layers for giving the protection for the cables okay depending upon the voltage levels the cables are classified like this okay depending upon the voltage levels okay the cables are classified like this okay and students in the next class uh, we will give the complete uh, cross section complete uh, explanation about the classifications of that cables okay depending upon the voltage levels and their diagrams Okay, and each and every parts and each and every insulating parts for that cables. Okay, that all will be discussed in the next class. Okay, these are the various types of cables. Okay thank you we will continue in the next class